You have just homed in on Prime Minister John Howard's backyard in Canberra. These images are publicly available. Four Corners could easily have chosen a celebrity's backyard, Nicole Kidman or David Wenham. And anyone in the space business knows it won't be long before these images move in further. Is it fair to say that satellites are the eyes and ears in space? And they may even be developing a sense of smell. They can see and hear everything. So, I mean... They really can read newspapers over people's uh, shoulders from space. Outer space is no longer the exclusive realm of astronomers, astrologers and science fiction. It's the new high ground from which our lives are now run. From space orbits 36,000 kilometers away, communicators put people in contact with each other and missiles in contact with their targets. Space is a frontier. It's tangible. It's there and stuff happens. And we are in our bloody infancy of understanding it. Space is also open for business for entrepreneurs with the right stuff. Three years from now we'll be sending paying passengers into space. We'll be sending them, you know, our spaceships will be launching every day. Are there things that we should be doing and in, in a sense things that we should not be doing as we move forward into this frontier? Uh, these are questions, very difficult questions. Tonight on Four Corners, the power brokers of outer space operating in a new and almost lawless frontier. Marianne Elliott is living the American dream. I think the capital and everything is so pretty. A former beauty queen and mother at 15, she now knows more about satellite communications than most people on the planet. She is a celebrity in the mysterious space business and a powerful player in Washington circles. Our work with the US government has fueled our growth. Just how much have you grown? Uh, over the last five years, uh, we've grown 1,061%. Elliot is a space broker. Her company, Arrowhead Global Solutions, makes $100 million a year buying and selling airtime on communication satellites. And in a post-September 11 world, with a new focus on national security, that business is highly competitive. Well, in the D.C. area, we're called the Beltway Bandits. And um, so this is the private sector. Yes working for the federal government on, mm. on national security? Yes, yes, absolutely. And it can be Lockheed Martin. Uh, Boeing has major presence here. Uh, Booz Allen and Hamilton, Bearing Point. Tonight, the Beltway Bandits, their clients and competitors from across the globe are celebrating an astronomical year of business. Washington's satellite gala night is a who's who of the space business. Powerful interests all cashing in. To our customers, long may they spend. There are few household names here, but space is now the realm of big multinationals run by a new generation of high flyers. Like Eric Beranger, the chief executive of space services for Europe's largest aerospace company. How much money is involved in space these days? Wow, you mean worldwide? More than 30 billion in, in, uh, in the US. 
and in Europe about a fifth of this, so between five and six billion uh, dollars. Per year? Per year, yes. Yet of the thousand guests here tonight and just what they do, the public is completely in the dark. If I said outer space, what would you think about it? Star Wars. Right? Am I right? Star Wars. Out of space. Far. <laughs> New York City. <laughs> Let me think about this psychologically. Out of space. Planet, stars, everything, really? <laughs> Alien. Alien. The Martians. <laughs> yeah. Can't be more helpful than that, sorry. <laughs> Venus, the love planet? I don't know. <laughs> the outer space itself, different shows. Right? Some people we know, right? <laughs> That's so rude! In fact, our lives are run from space. Banking transactions, retail chains that are networked, trades on the stock market, TV, the internet, international phone calls and GPS tracking. Space is no longer the final frontier, now it's the high frontier, in many cases beyond the reach of international laws and regulations. Frontier with few laws suits entrepreneurs like Jim Benson. He loves fast cars and fast rockets and is out to exploit space. Well, I've been called a space buccaneer, <laughs> but I haven't been called a space cowboy, but I kind of like the image. The former dot-com guru is now a space entrepreneur in what he says is a $100 billion a year industry. It's definitely an opportunity to make money and to make a lot of money. I have a slogan, if we want to go to space to stay, space has to pay. From his base in Poway, California, Benson is developing the technology to mine in outer space. His targets? Some of the 100 million asteroids between Earth and Mars. And he's already designed a near-Earth asteroid prospector. If we are going to explore and settle uh, space, the first thing we have to look at is the natural resources. We have to learn to live off the land like the early pioneers did. And the resources are right there, uh, ready and waiting for us. There are definitely asteroids, near-Earth objects that cross the Earth plane that are made 100% of iron nickel. They're as rich as the iron nickel in the great Sudbury mine of Canada, for example. That's great. The question is, what are the economics of getting those things in a usable form back to Earth. Jim Benson believes he'll have the technology. He plans to send up mining robots that would dig for asteroid ore and load up transporters. All this may seem far-fetched, but when Jim Benson spoke at a conference about plans to stake out asteroids as his own private property, he challenged the legal fraternity. Natural resources in space uh, are on a first-come, first-served basis, and whatever...